مرق بتا كورونا لده واحد من حاجات اللي كتنا في تجربة الهيمان بتانا كناس مؤمنين It's something which have never been there and this virus is the difficult virus it kills everyone This is the first uh, virus of its kind the worst more than any other disease so far we have learned outbreak of COVID-19 to South Sudan really set uh, a serious fear uh, to this country. It's uh, indeed um, a global catastrophe. It's a big problem. And uh, I wouldn't say really it is a curse, although within my constituency, the church constituency, there are people who have already said these are the agents of shame, these are the agents of Lucifer. These are the agents of Lucifer. So, want to kill those people who are not accepting Jesus Christ as their personal savior and Lord because we are in the end time. The outbreak of COVID-19, also known as coronavirus, sent a wave of fear and death across the world as one of the most deadly diseases in the history of mankind. First discovered in December 2019, the World Health Organization was forced to call out for prevention measures with the aim to minimize the spread of the virus. It doesn't like choose which religion you are from, but any human being, it just kills. And this is really a very serious thing because we have never had it. And when this epidemic it just popped up in April of this year, to us here in South Sudan, it was real crucial. But we thank uh, the, our government and the health, World Health Organization they actually told everyone have to keep at home. Where it need people not to be gathered together. They have to be very far to each other. And then they don't greet, people don't greet themselves. And um, they need uh, to be clean all the time, wherever they are, whether they are in churches, whether they are in their respective houses, whether they are in the place of work. First, it is heard that it has started in China, and the views were that here we are in a climate where it is hot, this thing is not coming here, uh, uh, many try to see it as something, yes, affecting uh, China and now Europe and now America, and it's not really here. We have never seen something like this. I'm 58 years old. Uh, even those that are 60, nobody has ever uh, seen something like this. And uh, therefore, it is uh, indeed um, a global catastrophe. It's a big problem. A lot of uh, tension and fears begins to come. But still, others have mixed views and misconceptions. Thousands emerging from years of political conflict, the impact weighed deep to many, especially the vulnerable, as the country embarked on implementing the preventive measures. Churches, learning institutions, and other social gatherings were forced to halt activities. Indeed, it created an impact in South Sudan, a country that has also been devastated by civil war and insecurities. So the coming of pandemic added into already many challenges, political, social, economic, that were already in the country. Apart from really just being, I wouldn't say really it is a curse, 
although within my constituency, the church constituency, there are people who have already said this is a curse, uh, probably a curse from, from God. Uh, there is a myth as to what um, uh, this catastrophe is all about. Uh, but it is um, a pandemic uh, that has happened and uh, it has had a lot of uh, impact in the lives of the people, uh, socially, economically, and I even want to say spiritually and politically. People's lives, I believe, are not going to be the same. Uh, this thing has affected uh, almost everybody. Spiritually, if I talk about it, uh, with the closure of the places of worship, um, uh, there has been a lot of laxity and as far as the spiritual uh, lives of the people uh, is concerned. Uh, there are people that have um, fallen back from their faith. There are people that have um, become so cold. Uh, there are people who are lost uh, because they have lost the spiritual guide, uh, especially those that are not so uh, spiritually uh, mature uh, in our churches. The Christian traditional norms of prayers had to alter Fellowships had to be cancelled. Believers were asked to pray at home, the practice that was rare in the Christian congregation across the world. It has really hit the church so hard uh, in terms of uh, the spiritual growth of our uh, faithful. Um, it has hampered the mission of the church, uh, as in preaching the gospel, going to places, having congregations around, um, preaching hope. This, this has been hampered uh, for all these months, ever since COVID-19 um, pandemic actually started here in South Sudan uh, when it was first discovered, and especially when um, churches and places of worship were, were actually um, uh, closed. That uh, affection and that face-to-face -face, uh, being together has been uh, really limited uh, because of this pandemic. The churches are already closed and this also a divided uh, divided the, the, you know our faith are always uh, different. There are those who will say now yes it is uh, these guidelines are also closing the church. Why? The church is supposed to be praying so that this thing stop. But now you are closing the one that is People get their money to the congregation. Most church activities is not being active as before, but it's being in a different way. You know, you may reach to the people. It may be when they have a free will you reach them in another way. It have affected the work of church so much because like, you know, church people using gather as a community coming together. But when now they are being say that you don't come to the church, you have to be in your home. Uh, people actually coming as a group, people are not there. In Romans chapter 13 from verse 1 to 7, it says, whatever the government say, we have to respect it. And that is why when this issue of COVID-19 become a problem all over the world. Our government took an initiative of banning all social gatherings, including churches. Some people are, are doing this and this, but what I know is that it's in place. Uh, even quarantining, I see it in practice in the Old Testament. It started there, in the book of Leviticus, and it was the priest who are to diagnose people who have infectious diseases and it says there in Leviticus uh, 14 anyone who is now sick the priest checks and if he is found to be having that infectious disease he has to be out of the camp for seven days what does it mean out of camp for seven days is quarantining so I see really the quarantine practice and principle even is driven from there. Although it was a difficult move to accommodate, the church in South Sudan laid down strategies to implement 
the World Health Organization stated preventive measures as announced by the high-level task force in the country. See, so there are those who really say, yeah, God's hand is there to protect. Because even in Deuteronomy 7, it talks, oh yeah, uh, the Lord will uh, not bring those diseases to you and so forth when you obey him and so forth. But indeed we are saying uh, here is something that is contagious. So really as church leaders we have to abide by the guidelines. As a church council of Pentecostal Brethren Church, we said we have to adhere to what the government is saying. Number two, they also we have to hear what the World Health Organization said. No rumors all over. And then our Minister of Health, National Minister of Health of South Sudan, we have to put this in there. Number three, we have to trust our God for what has come all over the world and especially this come into our country. So that is why the church leaders uh, stood and also uh, formed a task force under the Council of Churches. I think the South Sudan Council of Churches and they were able to do also uh, say that the churches remain close, maybe few people to be coming there and so forth. So who are those will come and who are those not coming? So during the convict here, there are those who go and there are those who have abstained. So I would say it has also divided the, it has divided the flock. We sacrifice together and journey together with those who have less faith and those who have strong faith. I would say we need to also find a way of accepting. If you have faith that you cannot be affected, yes, but also respect the one who will say hello so that you, you may be asked, you, you can ask him whether you can greet or not uh, politely. In that way, that can be a good one. God has given us guidelines of how humanity is supposed to also relate. In Old Testament, talk of the, the laws, the God, the, the, the Ten Commandments, and how we are supposed to relate to one another, and properties and so forth. So the abuse of uh, abuse of really these uh, guidelines and rules that also we are given about creation and how we are supposed to relate with one another, and definitely lead to some consequences. The most important thing is that let us continue with these instructions which has been given to us by the World Health Organization and then our government and then the most important thing and for most is we have to come closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in that, others even go to the point of defying the orders or the executive orders by our authorities or by our government. You have heard of uh, pastors being even uh, because they uh, defy these orders. It has happened here, it has happened in UAE, it has happened in America, I heard of that also in one of the states. Uh, he defied the governor's uh, views. And that is a matter of faith, because they say yeah, they must listen to God and so on. God listened to the prayers of everyone. And we know that it is through prayers God has heard us. You have to have a hope for tomorrow because tomorrow you never know what's happening, but we have a hope. And Jesus also tells us that uh, we have to be ready. We have to be prayerful and be ready. And in, um, in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, it says, nothing can separate us from the love of God, either hardship 
nakedness, all this or death will not separate us from the love of God because we know that God is more conquerors than any other things. Interstate movements were cancelled, the curfew was imposed, and work hours were reduced across the country. The wave of panic increased as figures on a number of infections in the country were seen rising. That convict time, I think even some people have confessed that I think the people are now socializing. There is time to be at home with children and so forth. Which I think our modern society is not, not adhering to. Uh, it's time that we can now be together and pray together at home. The early church actually was meeting in the homes. So I would say that time could become also another thing of reflecting and saying, look, are we really those home churches which can make people, and those early disciples in Acts chapter 2, 40, 42, there tells us they were together and they break bread and they pray and they eat together in fellowship, in joy. And no one was in need. They were churches, meeting homes and they help one another. But if we see now, we have developed an individualistic lifestyle. So we only meet in church and after church, each one goes his way and so on. You don't know who is, whether he has eaten or what. So maybe if, uh, if we can take also that meeting in homes and few people, it becomes all right because I see you and, I, and you see me. I know what you are going through. Then in this big church, that sometimes we can get lost. You can be a big loss and sometimes also be lost. Economically, uh, you know, people have also suffered a great deal. You know, um, and this is not only here in South Sudan. All that I'm saying is not actually just limited to South Sudan. This is uh, this is all over, and, and that's why it's global. And, and so we are part of the globe. We have also suffered the same. Um, people have lost their jobs. Uh, that is evident. Um, people have lost businesses, uh, and um, uh, businesses have actually suffered uh, all this time. Uh, we now have uh, many able-bodied really begging from in the streets asking for, for money to survive uh, and that has led to so many other uh, unwanted uh, uh, manifestation of behavior. Uh, people have committed suicide over the last few months. Um, there are quarrels in families because of the fact that you know, families are not able to provide for, for, for their own survival. So, yes, it has really hit the globe and hit us so very hard uh, in South Sudan uh, today. Uh, everywhere you go here, you find uh, a lot of trauma being manifested in the streets and in families. Uh, you know, given the fact that uh, families are now fighting and there are killings, there are children who are beating their f uh, parents, all these things for me really uh, can be attributed to this uh, new phenomenon. Christians were forced to adjust the way of life in the Christian faith. Global prayers were conducted in social media, radio and televisions. The church leaders saw this as a test to the Christian faith as members were forced to adhere with the government orders that were seen geared towards prevention against COVID-19. When calamities happen, uh, as priests and prophets, we pray to God. Even in the Old Testament, we see when kings who are leaders of nation experience catastrophes and problems, that uh, difficult, they go also to the prophets and the priests. And they really, these priests in turn pray and ask God for mercy. Our prayers, God will heard and we will stand together and we will pray. Even now as we pray to you from distance, whether you come you are far, but God is there. The Holy Spirit, because you cannot see the Holy Spirit, it moves. It touches everyone because God has a love for us. And that's why, you see, 
for God loves the world and he sent his only only begotten son Jesus Christ to come and die for our sake on the cross we are just ourselves and our lives accordingly and our behavior should also change uh, so that uh, uh, we, we are able to dodge this uh, this this pandemic it is uh, a virus that is uh, people are saying it is, is it doesn't have uh, its own uh, legs to move from one place to another it is us if we avoid it we can avoid it by washing our hands by not touching our, our face and after touching contaminated surfaces uh, by wearing face masks and keep uh, social distance if we do all those things then we are safe they know that we have to avoid with the government regulations decree and then even though the nature of what the nature of uh, of the disease itself the virus is more deadly and see there are traditional practices here in south sudan uh, which uh, has suffered a great deal it has really suffered because we are a people that if you like we are known for greeting one another we can greet one another before corona you greet until you feel even your hands are, are actually uh, depreciating we greet you greet when you are coming in you greet when you're going out and we like it uh, we have in a in Badilical alliance of south sudan uh, they have given us the, all the churches they have given uh, all these sanitizers soaps and so on. we distributed to every vulnerable people especially those who have, they don't have money to buy these things from the market we do provide them to our older behavior we have to change if we are to live until this covid 19 is no more we need to take this this pandemic and all that it takes being negative as they were we need to take it uh, by the horn and move life of course must move must move on uh, we, we have to continue with our lives uh, in the new normal and should it persist then we need to uh, we need to keep on um, keeping on we need to be vigilant enough uh, to ensure that uh, we defeat this pandemic Although it was seen as a test to the Christian faith, the humanitarian situation also worsened in the country. Many were not able to find food and basic needs for their families. The church response to the situation in one way was able to rescue the lives that were at stake of risking infection with the virus. The lockdown halted all the economic activities for most breadwinners in the families, and there was a growing need for encouragement. In the absence of uh, vaccine, in the absence of uh, uh, treatment uh, that would be um, uh, recommended, um, the fact that uh, the scientists have relentlessly uh, worked, you know, all round the clock, and the fact that they are not able to get something, if this is the scenario into the future, then what we are doing now must continue. But above all, as Christians, uh, I would urge that we continue to increase in our faith um, and, and increase in our prayer and increase in our concern uh, and love for one another. Kenisa, had a bit of white, and I'm not going to jam about, not going to say about it. Zolal Dave, Zolal Goitande, back the road, give more. Like now, Corona Kutufi, the one in the social distance, physical distance, or Kuluzol Vigaligan, so far. This is reality. And I'm going to start a barrow. If you do rufat and engage, I shall count the because all I'll begin to get meta. Bonus meta, bigger mafia. The pastors and church leaders and their congregations are encouraged to contact themselves through telephones and social media forum and use the same means to conduct services and fellowships through the telephone and this is what they've been doing during this time and then also we advise the church to pray for the whole world and our, our, and particularly our people in South Sudan regarding the COVID-19 indeed we inform also our congregation so that we have a selective group of church leaders to come and pray in all these centers 
churches of we have six branches in Juba. In the father of Corona, the Naskatri Bruce Hope, Hope Tomon, Mumbara Fekir Gal Kalas, Nehaya, Ja, Zeba, Genasan, we can get him in the Vida and Hatha Dunia. So if you call Daka for Guru Bitanas, Naskatri in Biga Gahawil, Fetish Betteriga Tane Barao Kef, Mumbagar Amin Habitam. لكن هذا الكويس يمكن اللي ربنا وده حكمة إن بقى جيش استخدم وسائل تانين عشان كيف إن بقى نكارج ناس حتى لو كنيس هو كيف كده السوشيال ميديا زين زي فيسبوك وحاجات ده إن بقى استخدمه بطريقة إيجابي هل كيف إن بقى دروس ولا ناس حتى لو بقى ما في ديستن قريب ما بعد لكن من خلال البرنامج ده إن نكريت جروب هل we can discuss some things together إذا في بيت بقى درتابي وإن بقى درامون ميتينغ سنة سوا so I'm kind of a jet. I'm kind of a man. Guess I'm not the color of sugar, sugar, small cells. I'll be sure that I'm not the tear. I'm not the man. Tabe, Kararata, Ozara, Saha. I'll not the man. I'm the visit woman. I'm the shed woman. I'm not the girl woman. Many families have been pushed down economically, and the face of many is also almost extinct by the impact of coronavirus. The effect of COVID-19 weighed violently to the church. Many could not afford basic prevention essentials like masks and sanitizers. The Evangelical Alliance of South Sudan, uh, just like any other church entity, um, has uh, had to uh, grapple with uh, how we can respond, uh, especially uh, at the heat of the COVID-19, uh, say for example around um, April, May, you know, when there is, there's been a lot of confusion. So we had to we stand up and begin to ask ourselves as to what do we also do? What will be our contribution in terms of uh, um, awareness creation and in terms of provision of uh, some of uh, uh, these protective uh, materials like um, the face masks and soap and and even providing people with the jerry cans for them to be able to at least have water and wash their hands and also we we like any other person we decided also to uh, really do this awareness and we did, did it and uh my bad miss someone as a margin as tia fans the world vision on the second moment so i'll be fun the city mono delena so now how will visit not to be tomorrow Visit hard with a visit another day. I shouldn't be shaking and asked in no work at a corona day. Then my honey had a year. Kalanas, you couldn't hope in Rabban and Lisa Fimanas. O Kalanas, you couldn't shake Jane, a mantom of Kalukun folk. Nana Batmara, it are of course the Hajal Batal. The cold socket Munkinzol be mutu. Gubales a corona maja. So now how will shake and ask them? O Commander of the House, Sarah Sadunasal Tabanin, Lana. Naman woke it a corona the white men hajat a little bag there gilbo corona lazimita be ako the talimata was a rasa. We uh, as church and alliance also are able to uh, respond immediately by uh, asking our partners to come into our aid and we were able to get the support from the Tier fund and the World Vision that enable the awareness on convict uh, by the members of the Evangelical Alliance of South Sudan. Door to door awareness was done and sensitization, uh, giving of sensitizers and soaps uh, has been done, and and mobile also uh, work through our volunteers who went into the various places and also others into FM stations to make their awareness on this uh, convict. With the reopening of learning institutions and places of worship across the country, a wave of precaution have been engineered in the church to receive the congregation that has been far for the past seven months. Churches are expected to take half of the congregation and ensure social distance, masks, and places of washing hands to be in use in the church. COVID-19 uh, 
challenge is also the challenge of the church. It's a challenge of the, the, the church and that is why the churches, we must drive compassion to see the suffering of, of those who are already affected and really find how we can also combat this by returning to God and having good lifestyles. As the Evangelical Alliance, we have created another thing. How could we reach people? And as people in their own places, we went to the to, to market because marketplace people are there. If they don't, they will not come to the church. But we go, we reach them by sharing the word of God to them there. Using microphone and then also moving at the roadside and then actually sharing the word of God with them. And this is how we, we managed to go around the Juba area. We went to Muniki, Kudele, uh, Jebel, Konyo Konyo, and then across the road. So we have been like sharing the word of the love of God with them. And that is what we have really managed to go in many areas, doing training to other people and uh, telling them they have to keep social distance. People at the community level were really totally uh, lacking information and a lot of uh, rumors was uh, really spreading around and, and, and the area that I work in, especially in Lolobo, uh, north, uh, which is the local one, and the Kator block, one of the suburban areas. Uh, really, the all categories of people, uh, head of households, big persons like elderly person, youth, and all this, they, they are really lacking information. Uh, and I happen also to be uh, one of the uh, volunteers also who is near to the same area. And I do survey, I found that there was information about COVID-19 uh, using the uh, roadside uh, campaign. And what happened in the community, they, they, they say, ah, you know, these things, this uh, information is now, they are tired of it and all this. However, as a person also who is a faith-based uh, practitioner and praying in the church, I found that uh, the, the families during the lockdown, there was no forum that people can come together and get information. That's why the idea of home to home uh, response to awareness uh, of COVID-19 awareness campaign came about. And, and it was not easy uh, to conduct it However, we meet the local authorities at the area there and then we ask them how are you uh, going with this current situation of COVID-19 in, in Lolobo here? And then they told us that, uh, yeah, they are getting information others through radios and, and also, you know, weekly the mobile microphone is going on with the information like uh, symptoms of uh, of uh, coronavirus is headache, cough, sneezing, and flu, and also very deep in breathing. So the the, 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 the local leaders was having information. After after we, we analyzed some of the use, they were not having information. They say, ah, uh, coronavirus is for targeting big persons or all age persons. So it's not for them. We are introducing ourselves, we are from the church. And then they start listening to us. I say, you're welcome. You know, all this time they have been locked down and then there is no any really access that they may can go to the church. We say yes, we come with the, with the two messages. One message, we are encouraging you that with all the kind of sickness that's there, including pandemic of COVID-19, God is still not forgetting you. And then our, our, our message was taken from a, a, a letter of Paul 
to 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 Romans chapter 8:28 uh, that uh, you know God will make all the things for the righteous for those who love him and for those who uh, who really has purpose in their life Christianity has been tied to certain norms and practices for years implementing prevention measures may in one way or the other encounter challenges that are difficult to avoid. Pictures of COVID-19 effect to the believers remain a horror haunting the church. We are responsible in ensuring that uh, people's uh, lives are taken care of and they are protected even when they get into the places of worship. And there are protocols that we have already we have learned having interacted with the with the um, with the authorities uh, here in this country before the opening and having uh, been taken through some of these necessary protocols and we have made sure our constituency the church constituencies our leaders uh, in the grassroots are uh, made aware of how they can uh, be able to mitigate against uh, the COVID-19. What I will preach to myself is that uh, I am responsible so we are responsible. Uh, freedom comes with responsibility. If you, if you are free, if you are allowed to freely do something, you must not take it for granted. You must uh, be responsible enough to do that, is, that which is within your take. Going to be preaching, uh, the social distancing, we're still going to preach washing of hands, we're going to preach wearing of the masks. Those things will have to be there. We have to remind ourselves even of the things that we already think we know or we already feel our people know we have to keep on reminding ourselves until the older normal comes back but if the older normal does not come back then in the new normal it has to be uh, face mask on hands it has to be washing our hands it has to be sanitizing ourselves so the church will need to take up that seriously in other words all our churches must have a number of washing stations uh, with soap made available for our people to wash their hands and uh, uh, where possible they will also need to have the temperature uh, uh, gun so that they can check people's temperature as they get into the place of worship and out uh, they need to wear face mask those are things that our pastors our bishops our, our um, uh, faithful must really uh, uh, take into account if we have the the number of people is so large you reduce them if you have like 500 it is only 250 will, will attend the service you may divide your services into two groups to the two faces the first one because of the social distance you know the chairs people have to have to keep the distance is still there and they know that as in the church there uh, the singing is there and preaching is there but you have to make sure that like it may be shaking hands it will not you just have to wave you just have to wave your hands in the church and we know that the children will not will not do that but we are uh, also advised like the those small children like the sunday school will not be there for time being as people are still coming back because they will not keep with the laws, we will not keep with the rules of COVID-19. So that is it. And then also for the schools, I think uh, a school, majority of our school, the primary school, will find in class there are 100 pupils, and that is a large number. If it is 50, then you will still. And this means that we have to divide the class into two or into three, and also train our children how to behave in the schools and then uh, by giving them enough uh, enough things because the sanitizer is there but not everyone will be affording that sanitizer we have been contributed but they will not all have it and the mask they will be able to wear it we know that, that there are this mask which is not uh, the one uh, like it is being local made but it is good because they will go and rewash it and then wear it the following day. And if churches are going to open, then definitely it is before the, 
after the degree of our government in South Sudan regarding the issue of COVID-19, people are not aware about this COVID-19. But in all this time, up to now, sincerely speaking, they are absolutely aware on how to go about this disease. And instead, this COVID-19 has made people so aware in a hygienic way of something of that. You can see during the time of rainy season like this, people have got so many diarrhea, cholera, and so on. But because of this cleanness all over, uh, people are uh, washing their hands, small kids, and so on and so on. You see, you have not seen this case of diarrhea. Even if you go to the hospitals, this issue is not there. If churches are going to open, definitely, surely, they will be 100% plus aware about the issue of this. Because we have already prepared the churches, and then we have prepared the sensors, and then even sitting in the church should be uh, one meter or two two and a half meters. Yeah, and then if the congregation is big, we can make it in sweep. Morning, afternoon, and then evening. So I bought this issue of our of our coming in touch with somebody who are having a coronavirus. What I see is the sensitizers are there. People was washing of hands. Uh, the doors, the washing, uh, the ushers are there to guide people to wash hands and to also spray the sanitizer to see that the, you put your mask if you don't they are, they, they are mask put by the door sign uh, so that you someone gives you that mask e, maybe what i see it is still a problem is the the distancing i think the distancing uh, because everyone now comes to church so you find uh, still the distance is not a meter apart. I would say uh, in some in some churches may try, but others maybe. Uh, I've seen also in funeral places where the the, 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 the distance uh, people are really apart and uh, they are just closed, and people have to bear with that kind of situations. Uh, we just pray that uh, really this thing doesn't uh, really hit again. It must subsize and go. Uh, but uh, the fear is uh, we, we, we don't anticipate that it should really rise up again. Otherwise, I don't think that the uh, guidelines are followed to letter and spirit. It is not easy like waving they can still wave if somebody is coming to you you say thank you you just greet him like this in a way but it is not easy um, as uh, church is going to open we know that there is difficulty challenges but people know that because the COVID-19 the coronavirus have not gone it is there uh, you may not know who has it or who doesn't have it. That's where we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect ourselves because um, uh, it affects everyone. You may be strong, your immune will be strong, but you get somebody who is older, he has uh, diabetes uh, and high blood pressure, asthma, and then you shake hand with him so he carries it and it become bad. I don't think that the uh, guidelines are followed to letter and spirit. Yes, it may be few masks and so on, leaders here and there, but uh, others really seems not to be. So he is still a risk and uh, and of course everything is a risk. <laughs> So people go there, of course we hope that God also is going to listen. 
uh, to answer so that he heals you so that he doesn't bring this pandemic to you so maybe that faith is also something that is um, so otherwise as uh, churches we believe that we need the prayer yes but we need also the, the, the word of God which is the logos but we need also the other therapy for wisdom from our 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 guidelines uh, from the high level task force which uh, if these two are followed I think we can be able to minimize the risk one of the biggest challenge is that believers have found it very hard when the church was being closed you know that really made some actually to to go low because some they believe that like being in the church that is it because i have to see the pastor and that it will encourage me but uh, as the church was closed so they find a lot of challenges and we have seen that even uh, even though we encourage them by talking to them on phone, calling them on phone, encouraging them. But that is the first challenge. The second thing, it has created a lot of, uh, a lot of, there because the cases of death in this period is so higher. There are a lot of cases of death. And these cases of death, because, okay, they have not tested everyone you know they have not tested everyone even those who die may be because of uh, this sickness but they are not being tested and there you find that people are still being there the relative friends are there people are still they come together and I think those are the very difficult thing for us as South Sudanese because when you talk about okay you have to be away they will raise a lot of alarm what is happening why do you feel that you are safe you feel that you are pure you feel that you are one but that's why I, I say that the COVID-19 the coronavirus is a real but just because you don't see it by your eyes, it just goes, it just moves. You know, the, the, the first challenge was that uh, you guys, you want to make money through the COVID-19. Others say, this is government, uh, you know, it's cheap. They want to get money and then do it. Because we are not now getting any surface and all this. So we are telling them, but they say, okay, because you're from the church and then you have a good message, that's why we are allowing you. So, so it, it was really, uh, they, they were appreciating, they, 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 they especially home to home uh, uh, approach, uh, because the message of hope, that, that really approach that we're using, they, 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 the measures that uh, put it or uh, given by National Minister of Health and then the, the word from the Bible putting together it was really very helpful and then the community was appreciating now the school is going to open and then the, the children uh, especially these upper classes are the one going to open and all this and then and then you know the, 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 the symptomic uh, the symptomic group is, is, is this young children and, 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 uh, and then also young youth that's why we also advising them even through radio talk show we also uh, in 87.9 uh, 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 top FM we also sending messages uh, in response to COVID-19 as lead to stop the spread of COVID-19 in, in a community level this is really very very alarming because some doesn't have radio, some doesn't have time to, to, to listen to radio and that's why we took the approach of house to house fellowship, you know, uh, I mean uh, approach for, for COVID-19. Although the population is trying to normalize the existence of COVID-19 in the country and its prevention measures, the alternation of South Sudan culture and ways remains 
a piece of life torn from the society. Church elders believe that with the presence of COVID-19, life will never be the same again, and building life with the new restriction will be a burden a society and a church has to exist with. In Romans chapter 13 from verse 1 to 7, it says, whatever the government say, we have to respect it. And that is why when this issue of COVID-19 became a problem all over the world, our government took an initiative of banning all social gatherings, including churches. Some people are, are doing this and this, but what I know is that it's in place. It is in place. That is why we said as a church council of Pentecostal Brethren Church, we said we have to adhere to what the government said. Number two, they also we have to hear what the World Health Organization said. No rumors all over. God has given us guidelines of how humanity are supposed to also relate. In Old Testament, talk of the, the laws, the God, the, the, the Ten Commandments, and how we are supposed to relate to one another and properties and so forth. So the abuse of uh, abuse of really busy uh, guidelines and rules that also we are given about creation and how we are supposed to relate with one another can definitely lead to some consequences and and this every everything that happens has a cause and to this, we believe that also the choices that human beings are making can affect or create some consequences for us. God listen to the prayers of everyone. And we know that it is through prayers God has heard us. And you have to have a hope for tomorrow because tomorrow you never know what's happening, but we have a hope. And Jesus also tells us that uh, we, we have to be ready. We have to be prayerful and be ready. And in, um, in Romans chapter 8 verse 35, it says, Nothing can separate us from the love of God, whether hardship, nakedness, all this or death will not separate us from the love of God. Because we know that God is more conquerors than any other things. And my message to them as a Christian, that our prayers God will have and we will stand together and we will pray. Even now as we pray to you from distance, whether you come or you are far, but God is there. The Holy Spirit, because you cannot see the Holy Spirit, it moves, it touches everyone. Because God has a love for us. And that's why he said, For God loves the world. And he sent his only, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for our sake on the cross. We adjust ourselves and our lives accordingly. And our behavior should also change uh, so that uh, uh, we, we are able to dodge this, uh, this, this pandemic. It is uh, a virus that is. Uh, people are saying it's, it's, it doesn't have uh, its own uh, legs to move from one place to another. It is us. If we avoid it, we can avoid it by washing our hands, by not touching our, our face, and after touching contaminated surfaces, uh, by wearing face masks and keep uh, social distance. If we do all those things, then we are safe. And see there are traditional practices here in South Sudan uh, which uh, has suffered a great deal. It has really suffered because we are a people that, if you like, we are known for greeting one another. We can greet one another before Corona. You greet until you feel even your hands are, are actually uh, depreciating. We greet. You greet when you are coming in. You greet when you are going out. And we like it. But you know the new normal now has changed that. It has changed the trend. And there is no way 
whatsoever that will need to go back to our older behavior. We have to change if we are to live until this COVID-19 is no more. We need to take this, this pandemic and all that it takes being negative as they were, we need to take it uh, by the horn and move. Life, of course, must move, must move on. Courage. So, <laughs> And I keep your mind as we talk about it, as we talk about it.